Hi there, my name is Mark Greenberg. I'm Product Marketing Group Director at Cadence, and today I'm going to answer one of the questions that people ask me a lot. It's about uh, what is a non-volatile DIM and how can it be used in a system. So first of all, let me explain, uh, well, what is a non-volatile DIM. The concept of non-volatile DIM is to put a non-volatile memory, like a flash or other non-volatile memory, to take it and put it on the same bus in the system as the DRAM. And let's look at a couple reasons why we might want to do that. So if we look at an example system on chip, and um, I have a system on chip here, and I have a couple of interfaces to it. I've got the DRAM interface, I've got the DRAM interface, uh, which is uh, a wide, fast bus capable of a lot of bandwidth at, uh, at very low latency. And then I've got a number of ways of connecting uh, other forms of non-volatile memory. So I have, uh, for example, I might have an NVMe bus. I might have uh, PCI Express. I might have SATA. And all of these buses are different ways of connecting to a solid state device which may host some flash on that, uh, on that bus. So um, my SSD has got my non-volatile memory, my flash on that bus. Now, these buses typically are uh, narrower and or slower than the, uh, than, than the DRAM bus, capable of less bandwidth. They also tend to have uh, a longer latency because uh, within, the, um, uh, within the SOC itself, there's usually a controller for the, uh, for the SSD. And then also uh, within the SOC, it may take a while to actually get data to and from the uh, SSD device because the CPU may also be running a driver um, may also be running a driver that's necessary to access the controller that, to then access the data that's in the SSD. So the concept comes with a non-volatile DIM to actually take some or all of the uh, flash memory that's on the SSD device and move it over onto the DRAM bus. And the concept here is, is that the CPU has already got a path, uh, you know, usually fairly directly to the DRAM. It's already usually a high bandwidth bus, and usually also there's there's little to no driver in the way of the CPU getting to the DRAM bus. So uh, this this path has the potential of being able to get the memory out of um, out of what's ever, whatever is stored here on the DRAM bus and get it back to the CPU. Uh, with less latency and less interference from the uh, CPU driver uh, or the driver running on the uh, operating system that's being um, uh, driven by the CPU. So I can do it with less effort from the CPU and I can do it in less time. Those are good reasons for moving the, uh, uh, the, the flash memory from the SSD onto the DRAM. Now let's look at how we might actually uh, implement this. Um, well, I still need DRAM on the DRAM bus, so I may have, uh, I may have one rank of uh, uh, DRAM still on here, on, on the DRAM bus. And then what I might do is my second rank, for example, might be one of these non-volatile DIM devices. So I'll have two ranks uh, on the bus and be able to access them um, as, I, as, I, as I access any multi-rank system uh, by using the different chip selects that are available um, on the bus. Now there's some other neat tricks that uh, an NVDIM may potentially do or uh, do for us. One of the things that we can do within the uh, within the NVDIM is, for example, we might we might mount both the DRAM and the NVDIM on the same uh, on on the same DIM device. So that helps us to get a little bit uh, a little bit better performance on the bus if we just have our DRAM. Plus our NV DIM, uh, plus our NV memory on the same uh, on the same DIM. So that's one of the things that we can do with with uh, with NV DIM technology. The other thing that we can do with NV DIM technology is that it allows us to consider other types of memory that are neither uh, NAND flash nor DRAM. 
And we're starting to see um, an increase or new developments in this type of memory. Sometimes people call them storage class memories, but they're solving a particular problem uh, in, the, uh, in the industry is that there's a, um, uh, a fairly wide performance gap between DRAM devices and our NAND flash devices. So if we, if we were to represent um, on one axis here, uh, let's put uh, let's put cost per bit uh, on our y-axis, and we'll put uh, access time uh, on, on on our other axis on our other axis here. And we may also consider on this other on this other axis uh, we may also consider bandwidth or something like that. So if we want to look at um, um, uh, something like this. So, so DRAM uh, offers us a fairly high cost per bit, but at, at a fairly good access time. We get pretty good access time out of our DRAM devices. Uh, NAND flash devices, on the other hand, exist sort of down in this space here. Their access time is long, and this may be, you know, two to three orders of magnitude in, in this, on this axis uh, between the, the DRAM axis time, which is typically uh, 10 to 15 nanoseconds, to a NAND flash access time, which might be uh, 50 to 75 microseconds or 50,000 to 75,000 nanoseconds. So it's a really big difference in the, in the access time between uh, the DRAM devices and the NAND flash devices. And what we're starting to see in the industry is there, there's some new types of memory sort of coming into this space here. Their, uh, they, their cost may be uh, between DRAM and NAND flash, and their access time similarly may um, exist somewhere between uh, DRAM and NAND. So there's a lot of opportunity uh, to introduce this type of memory. Now, what's the other thing that's happening in the industry is that these types, these new types of memory, are not really getting standardized uh, for their interfaces. Some of them try to model the, uh, the the DRAM standard; they don't always get it exactly 100% correct. Um, but there's no real standard for the the interface to these memories, and a lot of them are based on different physical properties of silicon, so they don't all really behave the same way. Not not so much like DRAM behaves in the same way, or NAND flash behaves in the same way. So uh, we've got several manufacturers with different types of memory that exist uh, in this space, and they've all got sort of different interfaces. And how do I connect it into a, uh, an SOC where I don't really want to have to have, uh, you know, five different controllers for the five different memory types that might exist in this space? Again, this is where the NVDIMM starts to become useful to us. I can put my uh, my my storage class memory, my new novel NVM memory type, I can put that on an NVDIMM uh, DIMM. I can put the controller for it also on this DIMM. And then I can have really whatever whatever memory type I want to on this NVDIMM device while still uh, respecting the, uh, the, the DRAM bus protocol, which means that I can connect it into any device any SOC device that supports the NVDIMM protocol. So um, those are some of the issues around non-volatile memory or NVDIMM uh, in use in the system. But uh, in summary, I've got memory today in most systems that exists on an SSD. Uh, it's normally NAND flash memory, and so I connect it over NVMe, PCIe, or SATA. Uh, using NVDIMM, I can move that memory onto the DRAM bus and um, also, by using NVDIMM memory, it allows me to choose my uh, storage class memory, uh, which may be some novel memory type, and put it on the same bus as DRAM and use the DRAM to access it. So, uh, I hope this allows you to build a new system one day that incorporates NVDIMM on your DRAM bus. And I hope this has been an interesting Whiteboard Wednesday for you, and we'll see you again next time.